So hi everyone, I'm Adriel Latorre from Darwin Bioprospecting Excellent, and I'm going to talk about assembly, metagenomic assembly. So metagenomic assembly is a special case of assembly in which we start from a microbial community. And ideally we want to have a single genome for each microorganism present in the community. But of course we have some issues uh, we start from an unknown and uneven composition of microorganisms. Then we have intragenomic repetitions found in each genome. And sometimes we have also intergenomic overlaps between closely related species in the community. So using traditional sequencing platforms, it results in incomplete genomes uh, with hundreds or thousands of contexts. Long-reads generated by Oxford Nanopore Technologies platforms have demonstrated to improve the, these assemblies in terms of a higher continuity and completeness. So the result has been the stimulation of the development of new assembly tools specifically designed to handle the Nanopore data. The objectives of our work was to benchmark the performance of these assemblers when using metagenomic data and to establish a pipeline for future metagenomics analysis in our lab. And we did that by using mock communities. So in our first evaluation, we used two different mock communities, both of them from CMO Biomics, and they consisted of eight bacteria and two Gs. They were the, the, the same microorganism for both communities, but they differ in the composition of the taxa. So we had uh, an even composition and a logarithmic composition. And it's important to highlight that in the even composition, the, the Gs were in a lower fraction. These mock communities were sequenced by Nichols et al and the, the data was publicly available in, in the paper. They used uh, Cridion and Promethion platforms for sequencing, but we decided to subsample the data sets to the output we were obtaining by the time in the lab we using Minion. So these are the results. I'm showing here the fraction of metagenome that uh, recovered by each tool. And as you can see, the best results were obtained by Metafly. You may notice that we used two different versions of Metafly. This, this was because delays in publication, so a newer version of Metafly was available and we decided to use it. And we maintained both versions because we found out that the newer version of Metafly perform better in and reduces the, the number of, this, of misassemblies. So other tools like Cano, Pomoxis, and Raven, uh, and Raven sorry, also work well uh, if compared to another tools like Redbean or Sasta. Well, you may notice that uh, every tool was far from recovering the entire metagenome. So uh, this was because of the yeast, which were in lower fraction, as I told you before. So if we remove uh, yeast from the metagenome, we found out that uh, tools like Metafly recover uh, almost 100% uh, of the metagenome. So when an analyzing the log community, uh, we found out similar, we, we found similar trends, but of course you have to uh, take into account that the composition of the mock community was biased. Uh, it was in a logarithmic scale. So we were only able to recover some, some taxa that this taxa it's what I'm showing in, in the graph. Um, again, best results overall were obtained by Metafly. But this time, uh, Raven and also Pomoxis and Canu 
work relatively well too. In terms of accuracy, uh, we found out that Kanu was the most accurate assembly, both in terms of similarity or SNPs ratio and in terms of indels. Um, either when publishing with Illumina read or with Nanopore read. Of course, if you want to, to know better about the results we obtain, I would recommend you to read our recently published paper. Then we perform a, a second evaluation and this time we use another four more communities Again, these small communities were sequenced by, were sequenced by other labs and the data, the data was available in the original papers. In the four cases, the small communities consisted of 12 different bacteria and plasmids, and they comprise different taxonomic groups, different distributions and different levels of complexity. Here are the results. I'm showing again the fraction of metagenome recovered by, by each tool. And as you may notice, we don't have results for Kano for the last two more communities. And this was because we decided to, to stop Kano after several days running. We made this decision because the other tools only spend a few hours to reconstruct the entire metagenome while Kano were spending weeks. Also, uh, you may notice that Pomoxis, um, we don't have results for Pomoxis for the last mock community. And this was because we had RAM issues when running Pomoxis. At this point, we, we discovered that Kano may be not so scalable to all the data sets. Again, best results were obtained by, by Metafly, and the smaller fraction of metagenome was recovered uh, by red bean in some cases or by NECAN in, in other cases. I would like also to highlight that Raven worked relatively well in all the data sets, and Kano uh, and Pomoxis were performing well, but of course we had, we had these issues that I mentioned before. I would like to finish with some personal recommendation on metagenomica assembly. This is the pipeline we are using nowadays in the lab so far, but of course focusing on which software to use to choose for metagenomic assembly. I will recommend you to use Metafly for general application. Um, my second option will be Raven, which, which is indeed faster sometimes. And I will also recommend you to use Pomoxis if you don't have RAM issues. Of course, Kanu also work really well, but as I mentioned before, it could not be scalable to all the data sets. So I would always recommend you to check for updated benchmarks whenever you're going to, to perform the metagenomic assembly. And I will also recommend you to always polish the, the assemblies. I think the most standard way to do that nowadays is to use one round of Reacon and one round of Medaka. But you can check for some other benchmarks on, on this topic. Finally, I would like to finish thanking Oxford Nanopore Technologies for letting me be a part of this Nanopore community meeting. And especially, I would also like to thank all the people in, in Darwin who helped me with the experiments, especially Pascual and, and Morgan who helped me with the data analysis and the bioinformatic stuff. And Javier, Manuel, and Cristina who are my PhD supervisors. So thank you all and see you in a minute.